blockbuster movie Gone with the Wind 2 Europe in Flames. It breaks box office records across the globe. In an unprecedented series of events, its first-time producer and leading lady, Sam Rank, goes from humbling, struggling British actress to super-rich Hollywood royalty overnight. In London at the Flair Film Festival, the movie is about to have its royal premiere. But all the trappings, troubles, and tragedy of fame are never more than a whisper away. Hey, arsehole. I thought you were fucking dead. I'm sorry, or was that your career? <laughs> Fuck me. Another snake in the grass. A oh, wanker. Bollocks, yeah? The cancer? How was it? Um, not as bad as your motherfucking cocksucking cunting Tourette's. What the fuck? Jesus. I mean, come on, what is this? 24-7 secret service? I can't even take a shit without them following me to the toilet. Samantha, Islamic State is going all out for Western Target. I mean, what about the incident at the BAFTA? You know, when you got your Westwood boob tube slash. That was just probably one of my exes after me throat. Tiara by Tiffany. Keep that on for the after party. And I don't get this. This speech, this speech has been changed. I wanted to talk about world peace, you know what I mean? I wanted to talk about and highlight issues that children are facing because of global, global conflict. Samantha, they want to hear about the glamorous elements of filming. All that location work across Europe, all the work from the international superstars. Yes, but it's all lies, isn't it? I spent the last six months alone in a green screen studio with blinking ping pong balls stapled to my nipples. Samantha, in your delicate state, you can't be going on location. You can't be working with all those actors. Let the CGI guys look after you. Let them manipulate you, digitally speaking, of course. Yeah, but I really don't want to do any of that special effects CGI crap anymore. I want to be appreciated as a real actress. I want to be a method actor. I mean, I want to, I want to feel real emotion inside, you know, real, real intense emotion. Mm, Samantha, be careful what you wish for. Look, you can tell Jim I'm not going to do Avatar 2, all right? Look, these Harry Winston earrings are going to look great on the red carpet. I mean, at least low-budget films were fun, and they had character. You get your shit together then, and appoint another agent. Sam, Sam, listen. Um, we have to assume Ian will never wash up. I mean, I knew those gay cruisers would be the death of him. Don't say that. You know he was like a father to me. Listen, this show part ring is lovely. Put it on, make sure you pick your nose a lot, yeah? yeah but it's not just Ian, is it? I've got more tragedy going on behind the scenes than I do in front of it. But listen, you're the goose that laid the golden egg. Aren't you happy? I mean, I mean, give the gentleman of the press your $100,000 Damien Hurst pearly white. Smile, Samantha. Come on. Hi. Jeff Charmer, Empire Film Magazine. How long have I got? As long as you like, just don't ask any questions about the last <laughs> Whatever. So, Disney's golden handcuffs. Is it true? What did they offer you? Remakes of The Little Mermaid? 
or Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Don't you want to talk about Gone with the Wind too? Not if every other magazine on the planet is covering it. You must know, we are uh, actually in discussion with quite a few production companies on uh, films that don't generally uh, you know, type past me. Are we? Like? You know, the attack of the 50-foot woman. Sam, tell Jeff about the film you did in Brussels, the battle scene where you upset out the helicopter with Brad Pitt. Not interested. One question. Do you think Hollywood's biggest director, Sir Nathan Cannon Letchworth, wouldn't have turned the gun on himself if he hadn't lost the court case against you? We did just say we're not going to discuss the lawsuit. Give me something. We've held the front page and a full colour supplement for what have we got here? Britain's newest national treasure. It's Tiffany actually, darling. Diamond encrusted. It's called the Devil Child. Jeff, come on now. Who do you think Judge Judy's going to believe? An innocent, disabled actress without a bad bone in her body? Or an unhinged director with a bad crystal meth habit? I mean, come on. 54 children. That was more than Dunblane, right? Look, listen, Jeff. Studios always have competing subject matter come blockbuster season. I mean, it's just a case of who releases their film first. What I think the public has a right to know is, as a little snake might have told me, is would he have been driven to shoot all those children in the orphanage because someone very close to him had actually stolen the script? No. Preposterous. Jeff, that's enough. Now, interview over. Fine. We'll put fucking Miss Piggy on the cover instead. Sam. Sam, Samantha, curtains up in 20. Samantha, you need to secure with you like a walking hat and garden. Piss off the lot of you. You move out of my way. Out. Don't worry. Charles always falls asleep in the first five minutes. Oh, and Camilla's always on Tinder. Sex scenes with Miss Piggy. Were they shot for real or does she use a body double? Hey, hey, wait, hey! But who is this? Oi! Help! This isn't funny! No, stop! Who is this? Help! Uh, no! Ah! Help! Attack of the 50 foot woman. Incredibly huge, with incredible desires for love and vengeance.